Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another, well, I can't really call it a repair video other than some specific instances, but we'll call this more of a maintenance video. Uh, and today I'm talking specifically about the valve adjustment on the 2.4 liter uh, Honda engine. Uh, here, also known as the K-Series engine. Uh, it's in my 2004 element. The uh, service interval for doing this uh, procedure, I looked it up and it appears that Honda recommends checking the adjustment around 110,000 miles. So you got quite a ways to go. Now, as far as the expected outcome of uh, adjusting the valves, in very rare instances, it will help smooth out a rough idle. It will also help keep, keep things quiet. Now, if you're wondering why we do this on this engine, most engines have hydraulic lifters, which means they have an oil-filled device that that helps actuate the valves which is in, invariably kind of self-adjusting by nature whereas the solid valve train does not use those hydraulic lifters therefore the clearance can change over time it's been my experience that you're better off leaving it alone if you're not familiar with doing this type of work and it does take a fair bit of practice to get things right I'll do my best to cover the specifics while I'm here but just proceed with caution because if you get the valves too tight you can burn them up in that case you'll have to remove the cylinder head and replace those valves get them too loose and it'll be noisy get them uneven or wrong you'll have a rough idle so there's a lot of things that can go wrong with this uh, so I, I can't stress enough on how I'd like you to proceed with caution with this because it involves so much of the feel of the feeler gauges that being said I am going to go through the process here so if you are interested in doing this work well uh, hopefully this video will help you do that all right to give you some idea of a baseline of what this engine sounds like before I do the adjustment, this is what I have here. Now, in case you're wondering, I have about 121,000 miles on this engine. The valves have never been adjusted to my knowledge, so this will be the first time. So you really don't need all that many tools, necessarily. However, one of the things that I recommend you uh, purchase or, or be prepared to purchase is a valve cover gasket. And right here is the part number for the uh, Honda gasket that I have. I did not get the uh, seals for the spark plug wells. Uh, those are something you're not often going to need, but I'll go over their replacement while we're in the process of doing all this. But real quick, let's also go over uh, some of the procedure that I hope to follow here. There's this cover that's going to need to be removed. These are all 10 millimeter fasteners that uh, go around the outside of the valve cover. There's two more in the back here. Also underneath here, there'll be some coil packs. Over on the side here, you'll notice the uh, fresh air for the PCV. There's also going to be this uh, vacuum line that goes to the brake booster that you'll have to disconnect from the side of the valve cover. Uh, some of these are more difficult on some uh, vehicles than others. This element seems pretty easy and straightforward, but one of the first things I'm going to do is remove the dipstick. And the reason I'm going to do that, it's plastic, it's very easy to damage. Uh, so just remove that and get that out of the way so you don't have any issues. You might want to check the oil while you're at it. But also notice there's quite a bit of dirt around this uh, hole. So I want to be mindful of that and do my best to try and avoid getting any debris down inside the engine as I work. Okay, I'm going to start removing these uh, covers that I spoke about earlier. As I said, these are just uh, 10 millimeter uh, nuts. And then there may be a little rubber thing holding that uh, part in there. Next, I'm going to remove the uh, harness for the, well, actually, I'm going to see what I can do about removing this power steering hose bracket. On some vehicles, this, this hose is just a real pain. And you might consider removing it completely from the power steering pump. You might consider that, it's not necessary, but it will make a little bit of a mess. This is something you might run into. I'm almost, I'm almost glad it's happened here. Uh, there are studs that stick up underneath this cover that may come with these fasteners. Don't be alarmed. These in the back here are a different size, so please note that. They're more of a, a stud than a nut. Two of those back there. And as soon as I get this up, you'll be able to see what I'm referring to. You can see that these uh, pass through to some nuts underneath that hold the coil packs down on two of these. I'm just going to grab a wrench and I could take these off the top here. That way I can put this all back down uh, the way it was. Be aware that that could happen when you go to remove this cover. 
Next, uh, we'll uh, disconnect the harness from all the coil packs. What I could do now is just sort of pull this back up out of the way. Two of these coil packs are now free. Uh, check them for oil. If there's any oil on the inside here, that's uh, definitely something we need to address while we're here. I will uh, talk about the possible causes of that oil leak after we get the valve cover off. The two remaining coil packs have uh, 10 millimeter fasteners that hold them in. And I should have mentioned also a spark plug wrench, 3-8 socket, and an extension because I also remove the spark plugs when I perform this procedure. Longer fasteners for additional coil packs. Now they don't have to go back into the same place you took them out of because uh, they're all the same. But once again, check them for oil oil on anything, oil contamination. Okay, now I'm gonna remove the spark plugs. As I said, I have this uh, 3 8 set up to do that with. At about this mileage, uh, if you haven't changed your spark plugs, it's probably gonna be a good idea. These are 100,000 mile spark plugs as it is. So you might uh, consider that. So this would be a good thing to do at like say 110,000 mile service. In fact, I've already done the bulk of the 110,000 mile service uh, with this vehicle already. There's videos for that. I'll post links in the description of that along with tools, other useful information. So if you have uh, any questions, I would ask that you head down to the description and see if you can find your answers there first. I use this telescoping magnet to uh, retrieve spark plugs. These actually look pretty good and they're not that old. They're recently replaced as a matter of fact. I did them during that uh, 110,000 mile service not long ago and looking at these, they actually look quite good. I don't see any signs of any burning oil or anything. The plugs can tell you a lot by looking at them. And these all say that everything's doing pretty much what it should. Now I'm going to remove that PCV hose that we talked about earlier. There's just a spring clamp on the outside of it that you can move back. And then I'm just gonna try and pry the hose off like that. Now there are two 10 millimeters over on this side, which I'll bring you over to take a look at that uh, need to come off to get this tubing off of here. Okay, here are those two fasteners that I spoke of uh, down on this side of the valve cover here that you'll need to remove. Uh, if not, it's gonna be awfully difficult be fighting with this uh, piping in this bracket. Now that that's detached, you'll be able to uh, successfully remove the valve cover. Right, now the fasteners that hold the valve cover on, there's one here, 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 and here. So three in the front, one here, and then these two in the back, which I'm gonna go for the ones in the back first. Now this procedure pretty much works on any K series. Uh, you might wanna check the specifics as far as the clearance is concerned for your vehicle. But most of them are pretty darn close to being the same. And they use this engine in lots of stuff. They also use this in CRVs and cords and uh, lots of Acuras. So this K-Series engine has been used quite extensively uh, in the Honda lineup. So I'm hoping this video will help quite a few of you. And something else I probably should have added to my tool list was a small pry bar, which could have been helpful for you. Now when you go to lift this off, know that these uh, grommets on the studs for the valve cover, let's see how reluctant it is, uh, that they may fall down into places where you can't find them. So if you have the opportunity, like I do here with this one, to remove this or part of these as you're uh, working, that's a good thing. That way you don't have to go hunting down in the engine bay looking for this stuff. It's never fun. Okay, I'm going to get that small pry bar I talked about. Right, now I'm going to position that pry bar right down here where this valve cover meets the cylinder head and just sort of give it a little twist. Once again, being mindful of these uh, grommets that will inevitably come loose as you do this. 
better to get them now than search for them later. And if you can, and you get them all, before you actually remove the valve cover, you're doing pretty good. And these in the back, the metal came off, but not the rubber. And if the, you can purchase these separately, so if you find that they're brittle, these are still rubber and pliable, but if you find that these are brittle, probably not a bad idea to replace them. But yeah, mine are all still nice and pliable. And I can tell you why. One of the things that's gonna make these last longer than anything is regular oil changes. That saves all the seals on your engine. I think we're all loose and we can just lift this straight up off of here. Now, the uh, spark plug tubes have uh, some seals that are on them. That's why you need to lift straight up. But uh, if at all possible, that's the way you wanna go. Straight up. Like I said, removing that power steering hose is not a bad thing. There we go. That engine looks really good inside. As I just said, this engine looks really, really good. Uh, this is regular oil changes. 121,000 miles practically looks brand new. You can see some wear on the cam lobes. Uh, these in the front here are the intake, those in the back are the exhaust. You can tell the exhaust manifold's back there. There's the intake manifold on this side and the corresponding valves to go with them. Here's the uh, timing chain. Perhaps we'll work in a video somewhere about how the uh, IV tech works, which is what that guy's for, but we're just going to focus on the valve adjustment for this one. And yes, it does have roller rockers and it has VTEC. So these are the larger lobes and the smaller lobes. Uh, but it just has VTEC on the intake side, not on the uh, exhaust side. Let me show you something over on the valve cover real quick. Okay, here's my valve cover. Also looks really good inside. And here's my valve cover gasket. Now this still is very pliable. Uh, it also didn't show any signs of leaking anywhere. And as I said, I don't think anybody's ever had this off. I could reuse this gasket and be totally fine with it. When these get old and brittle, that's when they don't seal. So they won't be all pliable like this. They will, they will basically crack and break as you do this. Now this is what I wanted to show you about these tube seals. Uh, these, well, they, they turned inside out on me. But they should actually be like this when you go and uh, install them. And see how nice and pliable these are? Once again, that's what you want to see. If they're not all pliable like that, then I would replace them. And in order to do that, it's somewhat difficult if I'm honest. The reason, you have to come in through the top here with something and knock them out through this side. They're, they're actually pressed or if you want to call it hammered into place. Uh, so you've got you've to be mindful of that. And look at that dirt that came in there. I'm going to actually do some cleaning of this valve cover before I reinstall it. But I have to be careful to keep the parts cleaner away from these rubber parts because it will cause them to uh, sort of harden up and be a problem. If you find that there's oil inside where the spark plugs are, these are not at fault. I'll show you what the problem will be. Okay, so if you go to do that and you find oil in the spark plug tubes and you find it on the coil packs when you pull them out, it's not very likely to be those upper seals unless they were not put on there properly. The seal actually sits down here. So this, this part here sticks up above uh, the seal. So it's very difficult for oil to get up above the seal and down in. What happens in that instance, and this happens on Toyotas as well I've seen, is the threads on the bottom of this tube are what's leaking the oil. So you'll need to get a pair like a channel locks or something like that. I've used pipe wrenches in the past uh, to pull these out. You unscrew these, uh, you clean up the threads on the bottom, put some sealant, I've used Honda Bond, uh, around those threads and screw these back in. And that usually cures that problem. But as you saw earlier, I don't have that problem. All right, now before we get started on this adjustment proper, this engine is still a bit warm. These valves need to be stone cold when you adjust it. So I'm actually gonna take a break from this and come back. If the engine is still warm, if these are still toasty, don't do the adjustment until it's cold. Those adjustments need to be made cold in order for them to be accurate. And we're back. I've given the engine a good amount of time to cool down 
and we're, are up, we're back so that we can uh, begin our adjustment. Now you can go about this in a couple of different ways. Uh, if you know the firing order of the engine, you can put the uh, valves on one cylinder up at a certain point and then adjust the other valves, which would also be on the, technically be on the base circle. Through my experience, I have discovered that the best way to adjust the valves, at least for me, has been to make sure that it's always like dead nuts on the base circle. I mean, even though this on the side here is technically the base circle, personally, I find it's easier to do it everything just like this. Now, like I say, you can bring this up to number one, top dead center, and both of the uh, cam lobes will be on the base circle, both on the intake and the exhaust, so you can adjust both valves for that cylinder. Uh, then because of the way the firing order is, it goes one, three, four, two, you can keep coming around like a quarter turn of the crankshaft uh, to each one of those valves, perfectly acceptable. But as I said, this is just the way I do things. Now, some people uh, would prefer to uh, turn the uh, wheel all the way to the, I guess it would be to the right, so that you can uh, put a, uh, an extension with a half inch uh, ratchet through the side and turn the engine that way. But the reason I had you remove the spark plugs was because you can just as easily take a 19 millimeter wrench and uh, rotate the engine this way. And just now that you've got this, uh, the spark plugs out, it's very easy to, to turn the engine just with this power steering pump. So rather than, you know, bending over and going through all that work, I just turn via the power steering pump and I am very happy with that. That's how I do it and that's how I'm going to go about it, but I'm just going to go from valve to valve to valve and I'll talk specifically about uh, the feel of, of how this works, but you really can't know until you experience it. But before we do that, let's talk about the gauges I'm using. Okay, here are my feeler gauges and I, I have these longer feeler gauges. Uh, once again, links in the description to stuff. For the intakes, I'm going to be using this uh, 8 thousandths or 0 0.203 millimeter uh, feeler gauge. For the exhaust, and this one's kind of hard to see, what that says is 0 .012 uh, inches and 0 0.305 millimeters. I believe the spec for the intake valves is between 8 and 10 thousandths. For the exhaust valves is between 10 and 13 thousandths. One last thing before we dig in is I'm using this special valve adjusting tool that is specifically designed for Hondas. Links in the description for this stuff. Uh, but this makes things a lot easier. Now I'm going to be taking my measurements. I've already got the uh, cam lobe here uh, on the base circle. I'm going to be taking my measurements in between the uh, tip of the valve and inside of here. And this one is actually a little bit loose. Uh, so I'm going to come in, just loosen the nut, snug it up, and I'll just, I'll just turn the screw until I feel it bottom out. Then I'll hold it in place and tighten the nut. And then I'll check the clearance again. Now I'm looking for just a slight amount of drag. It's super important that you don't get these too tight, as I mentioned earlier in the video. So you just want a little bit of drag. There's still, it's still moving pretty good there, so I'm gonna tighten it just a hair more. And literally, this is a matter of, it, it really is splitting hairs. That feels pretty good. And this, this uh, 8 thousandths gauge is really on the tight side. So if this fits a little bit loose, you're better off than it fitting a little bit tight. Okay, switch over to the other side. And these long gauges can be a blessing and a curse. A blessing in that they are easy to work with when adjusting valves. I found that using these long gauges can really be helpful, but they can also get entangled in other stuff as you're working. So once again, I've got a little bit loose there. Just bringing it down, snugging it up. And once again, I'm a little loose still. I'm just going to add just a little bit more. There it is. That is a beautiful amount of drag right there. That's just what you want to see, just a little bit 
of drag. You just want to feel it just snug in there. It feels tight and it's hard to pull loose and up. Better loose than tight. Better to hear them than smell them, we say. All right, now I'm gonna jump back on the exhaust valve over there. Okay, I have also brought this uh, exhaust cam lobe up to top dead center. Experience has taught me that when doing this, many times what you'll see is uh, the exhaust valves will be a little bit tight and the intake valves might be a little bit loose. That just seems to be the way it goes. Uh, and these do seem a bit tight. Let's try this other one, it might be easier to get to. All right, now trying to get this gauge in here, it's just not even going in. And I know I'm on that base circle. So therefore, I need to loosen that guy up a little bit. Well, at least it hit the ground, right? I'll grab that feeler gauge. Don't worry, I wiped the dirt off first. And once again, you see when the feeler gauge starts to move, it's sort of seated in place. I leave it there, and then I just tighten it up, snug it up. And that feels a little loose still. I'm just gonna add a little more oomph to it. That feels pretty good there. I like that. It's got what feels like some good clearance, good amount of drag, move on to the next one. So we're having a similar problem on this side in that can't quite get the feeler gauge in. As I said, exhaust valves, I'm pretty much all the adjustments I've done seem to go a little bit on the tight side. That feels pretty good. Repeat the process for the other valves. This engine rotates clockwise, by the way. Now to show you an alternative method, I'm gonna use a wrench and a screwdriver on this one. These are 10 millimeter. So thankfully, with the design of this engine, you're able to get in there with this. The special tool really comes in handy with, uh, like say your GSRs, places where the valves are recessed down inside the cylinder head. That's where it comes in the most handy because you're not gonna be able to get down in there and some of those with, uh, without a special tool. Well, that feels pretty good. I'm just gonna run through the rest. I mean, you've seen the process, both with and without the special tool. And as you know, you just bring them up on the base circle. Like I said, if you want, go through the firing order, one, uh, three, four, two, uh, and you can do it that way, or you can uh, do every one on the base circle like I'm doing. And that does it. That's all of them. That's all 16 valves. So what now? I'm going to run through and check them all again. Uh, I'm going to do that a little bit at a, at a different pace than I did with this uh, for the video's sake, but uh, probably a good idea to go back and check. It's, uh, you know, it's the old adage, measure twice and cut once. Uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much what I'm going by here. I think that does it. As I said, I'm gonna give the valve cover a little bit of a freshening before I reinstall it. Once again, I'm trying to avoid uh, getting stuff on these uh, rubber grommets, so I'm really gonna to try to focus my cleaning on the outside.
I'm going to finish it up with a little bit of compressed air and we'll be able to reinstall it. Well, somewhat last minute, I opted not to go for the compressed air and just went for my rag to finish things up. Main reason, there's a, a lot of this finish that's peeling off of this valve cover. It could really use uh, a good sandblasting and uh, respray. Not going to do that here today. I'm more concerned that the inside of my engine is clean and pretty. The outside doesn't matter to me so much, but that's just a personal preference. Since you've got the valve cover off, do what you like. Uh, but now that I've done that, I will uh, now install my new valve cover gasket. Uh, I'm going to have to clean these grooves out a little bit more. Uh, but once I do that, I'm ready to uh, install the valve cover gasket and get it uh, back on the engine. Personally, I prefer an OE gasket, but there are other gaskets that uh, are out there in the universe that will also work. Now you notice I didn't use any RTV or any kind of sealant or anything on here because it really doesn't need it. Uh, let the gasket do the work. This will help seat it in there so that when I go to drop it down on the engine, it's not going to fall out on me. That would be unfortunate. I'm also going to go around here on the mating surface and clean this area up. Now, I will put a very small amount of RTV here where this uh, front timing chain cover meets the engine. There's a very small space there, as you can see, it was there originally. I'm going to do the same thing in the back, which I don't believe I can get you in to see, but it's right about down in this area here. Uh, that gets the same thing. And I mean just a small dab. I'll show you when I'm done, but you don't want to do a lot here. But for now, I'm just going to make sure there's no debris or dirt that's going to go down into the engine. Oh, and also right here at these junctions, uh, you'll see on these bends here, a very small amount of RTV here. So just a couple of spots in very minute amounts would be acceptable. I wouldn't go any more than that. Ready for that RTV. I'm using Honda Bond for this. You can order this stuff online. It's kind of expensive, but it's what's used. But I'm sure you can use other RTV. It's not imperative that you use Honda Bond for this. It's nice but not completely necessary. Right, you can see small amounts. Now the trick is to get it maneuvered past all this stuff. Mainly the power steering hose is what you'll probably be fighting the most. Before you commit, run your fingers along the gasket just to make sure no part of it got rolled over or moved in some way. And the rest you're just pushing down on those seals on the spark plug tubes. And that should seat you right in place. It's just the reverse of what you did to take it off. I hope I can get that, because that was rubber. Yeah, dropping a piece of black rubber is uh, worst case scenario in a lot of ways. Luckily, I was able to find it. I like to start at center and work out. 
Recommend quarter inch tools for this to avoid breaking studs. You don't want to over tighten stuff. I've had a lot of emails with people that have done things like that. And if it happens, it's okay. Just got to remove the valve cover and remove the stud. A lot of times they're replaceable and you can purchase them separately. But to avoid that altogether, try to be mindful of how much torque you're putting on a fastener. Remember, it's not a big thing, which is why I recommend using quarter inch tools to avoid over tightening. Those two fasteners on the side over here. These are shorter ones. When I position things, even in my magnetic tray, I do it in such a way to where things are grouped or possibly even put with the part that they came off with. This uh, makes reassembly a lot easier. So I'm not hunting for a particular fastener or make sure that I've got the right size fastener. It's very disappointing to try to put something together only to find that you put the wrong fastener in the wrong spot. Already reattached this hose. Just need to put the clamp back on. I try to put them on in the same place they were when they came off. Be careful putting just dropping these down in. You can bend the uh, negative. Uh, I'm speaking from experience. And if you do that, it's a misfire. They've been previously installed, you just need to snug them up about a quarter of a turn past when they bought them out. Maybe not even that. If they've been installed previously, coil packs. As I said, it doesn't matter which one they go into, they're all the same. May help to not fasten them down. Plug them in first before you fasten them down. Might be easier to get to them. In fact, it might have been easier to remove them this way too now that I'm here and thinking about it. Remember our special cover? Well, if you just sort of position it here, you'll, uh, oh wait, wrong way. If you just sort of position it here, you'll have an idea of which fasteners go into which uh, things. And it looks like this one and this one. So this one and this one. Get these. I've already gone ahead and loosened these up. Like I said, just took a 10 millimeter wrench on this lower fastener and uh, my socket on the other. Came out quite easily. These are also 10 millimeter. Honda seemed kind enough to give us everything the same size. Okay, remember these long, oddly shaped studs? You go in the rear, the others in the front. And because these might be a problem, don't tighten them a lot. Just a little bit. I'm gonna reattach my uh, power steering hose bracket. Let's not forget our dipstick. Clean this up a little bit too. Gonna think of it. Might as well check that oil. Bang on. Hasn't burned a drop since I changed it last. One last cover here for the front. To be honest, do you really need these covers? Probably not. They're just there to make things pretty. I may be jumping the gun by doing this because if it's noisy and I have to take it back apart, I'm gonna have to take this all off again. But I'll be confident. Nothing wrong with a little confidence. Let's uh, see how it sounds now. We're back, it's warmed up, operating temperature. It's a little louder than it was before, but as I said, I'd, I'd rather have it a little bit loud than quiet. 
but it's also smooth, very smooth, which is equally important. To me, that sounds healthy. Let's wrap this up. Well, there you have the basics of the valve adjustment on the K-Series engine from Honda. As I said, it's in many, many vehicles besides my Element uh, that are out there. So it's, it's something quite possibly if you own a Honda of a recent vintage you may run into. Service interval, like I said, uh, they say check at 110,000 miles or if noisy. This is a fine tuning adjustment. I wouldn't expect it to work miracles. It might help with your mechanical skill. It might give you something to do on a weekend, but it's, it's very rarely something that it solves a problem unless somebody has gone in and adjusted them poorly and has created a bad idle ahead of time these valves I'm pretty sure haven't been adjusted since this thing left the factory and they were good for 121,000 miles and that's that's typical in my experience it's also typical to have the exhaust valves a little bit tight during the initial adjustment and the intake valves a little bit loose that seems to be just any valve adjustment I've done on Hondas, it seems to work out that way. Other than that, uh, tools, other additional information will be down in the description, so please check there if you have questions. If you have automotive questions, uh, things that weren't covered in this video, I would ask that you get over to ericcarguide.com. We have a welcome video there to tell you about our features to help you with those automotive issues, should you have them. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, and now Instagram. I post repair videos every Friday, so stop back and see me then, and I close each of my videos. So be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Next time.